how k equilibrium varies as a function of temperature. Okay, so the derivation is relatively straightforward. We start off by stating that we can relate delta G standard to negative RT log of k equilibrium. And then we replace the left-hand side with delta H standard minus T delta S standard. So this is just, of course, saying delta G is equal to this. We'll bring down the right-hand side. And now what we're going to do is divide both sides by negative RT. Okay, so this is usually written actually the other way around, and so I'll go ahead and write it that way. The log of k equilibrium is equal to negative delta h over r, and I'm going to split out the 1 over t for reasons that you'll see in a second, so I'm just splitting up that, plus delta s standard over r. Now, if we were to say, look at this and say, is there anything in here that's constant and things that are variables, we can see that if we call this y and we call this x, if we look at this, this is a constant. Remember, delta H varies very slowly with temperature. So this could be the slope of a line because that has to be a constant. And this could be the y-intercept for a line. So we can see here we have a basis for a linear relationship, not between k and t, but between the log of k and the reciprocal of t. So this says that if we graph the reciprocal temperature on the x-axis and the log of the equilibrium constant on the y-axis, we should be able to extract the delta h from the slope, and of course the delta s from the y-intercept. We could also do this for just two points and uh, get k at a new temperature, and that's what we'll do in the example problem. Okay, so let's examine this reaction and suppose that we have some data. Suppose that we're given that this reaction is endothermic to the tune of 57.2 kilojoules per mole. and that we see that the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees C is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.15. So it's got an unfavorable equilibrium constant. When you run this reaction, you're just gonna end up with mainly reactant and, and uh, just a minority of the product. Okay, so the question is, what would K equilibrium be at 350 kelvins. Okay, so we can figure out k at a new temperature using our Van Hoff equation. So, uh, and we can do this without actually uh, knowing the delta s. So let's see how we can do that. So we start by writing out a relationship. So the log of k. is equal to negative delta H for the reaction over RT plus delta S for the reaction over R. Now let's imagine we're going to write this. Uh, we say we, we know all these numbers here for uh, 25 degrees C. So we'll call this maybe K equilibrium 1 for the first temperature. So at the second temperature, we could call that the log of k equilibrium at the second temperature, so we'll put a little subscript 2 there. Just rewrite the equation. This time we're at the second temperature, T2. Of course, the delta S 
term will be the same because delta S is approximately constant with temperature. So notice we've written the equation twice. Now whenever you have equations like this, you can subtract an equation from an equation, you can add an equation from an, uh, to an equation, or you can divide. Because remember, because it's an equation, the two sides are the same. So if I subtract this equation from the top equation, notice that I'm subtracting the same thing from both sides. So let's do that. Let's subtract this entire equation from the first equation. Okay, so we've got the log of k1 minus the log of k2, and that's on the left-hand side. And then I've got minus delta h over r, and I've got t1 minus t2. So I just pulled out the delta h over r terms because they were they were the same in both of them. Um, and then I have uh, this minus that. And notice the delta h over, the delta s over r is the same, so it's going to cancel. So notice I have an expression now without entropy in it, which is going to enable me to solve this problem because I don't actually know the delta h delta s for the for this for this reaction. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. First of all, let's go ahead and switch the sign. So I'll multiply through by negative one. So I've got the log of k2 minus the log of k1. And uh, these, of course, are equilibrium constants. I'm getting a little bit uh, concise in my, in my uh, notation here. And then I've got delta h over r, and I've got t2 minus t1. So I've just switched. I've just multiplied through by negative 1 on that. And finally, I can combine if you have a difference of logarithms, that's the same as the logarithm of the quotient. So I have the log of k equilibrium 2 over k equilibrium 1. But that's equal to negative delta h over r, 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. So this is a two-point form of the Van Hoff equation, and you should get comfortable with taking single equations and then saying, what if I have those single equations at two points? I can take the difference between those equations or, or divide or whatever you need to do to get a two-point equation. Okay, So this is a manipulation you should be able to do with any equation that you have. Anyway, let's go ahead to our example. We have everything that we need for this problem. The only thing we're solving for is k equilibrium 2. That's our unknown. So let's solve for that solve this for k equilibrium 2, which is what we're looking for. So we'll take exponentials of both sides and then multiply by k equilibrium 1. Okay, so we've solved this for k2. And all we have to do, you have to be careful here, and remember that these are ordered pairs. Okay, so you can't mix and match. So if we look at t1 and k, so our t1 was 298 kelvins. Our T2 was 350 kelvins. Our K1 was 0.15, and we're trying to find K2. And we have our delta H, we said, was it's a positive 57.2 kilojoules per mole. OK, so as long as you keep these pairings straight and don't mess up your units, you should be fine. So let's plug in the numbers here. Our original equilibrium constant was 0.15. And we have that times an exponential. So we had 57,200 joules per mole divided by 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. And we had our temperatures, which were T2 was 350 Kelvins and T1 was 298 Kelvins. All right, and we can see we have reciprocal Kelvins here. That's going to cancel our reciprocal Kelvins here. Moles cancel moles, joules cancel joules, and so this whole thing is unitless, which is good. We're about to take an exponential. And when we do this, we get a final result that the new equilibrium constant is 4.6. So notice, in this case, we went from reaction with a unfavorable equilibrium constant to one with a favorable equilibrium constant. So this reaction is more favored at high temperatures. 
Let's go back and look at this reaction and see if that makes any sense. Aha! Look at this reaction. We're going from one mole of gas to two. So we know that delta S for this reaction is going to be a positive number. In other words, the entropy change is favorable. Um, and so the entropy term in uh, the Gibbs energy is favorable. And if we go to a high enough temperature, we can overcome this, this very unfavorable enthalpy term. So our result tallies with what we expect. And you should always check the, numer the numerical answers that you get at the end. Do they tally with what you expect conceptually?